Good morning. At this time, we'd like to ask all of the mothers to please stand. Before God and one another, we honor you and the work you do. We live in a society that sometimes overlooks your God-given status. But we say that you are blessed, for you have been called, set aside, and commissioned to bear fruit, fruit that will last. We declare that your work is sacred. We recognize that you lay down your lives for others, that you give without thought of cost or repayment. You serve above and beyond what is seen or asked for. You bless and you love in ways that words cannot capture. Your thinking is often of others, your time spent on others, your prayers spent on others. You are a blessing to others. This is a high calling. For this we honor you, and in this calling we bless you. We bless you to be wise, to see what is hidden, and to hear what is not said, and to do what has been undone. To know when to speak and when to listen. We bless your words. May you speak goodness and kindness into your children. May you strengthen, encourage, and comfort with great skill. May your children thrive in your praise and correction. We bless your time. May God bless you. May God bless your sleeping and your waking. May you have the time you need. May you have time to laugh and a time to reflect. May you have time to share deeply with dear friends, to walk closely with God. We bless you to be free, free from the expectations of others and the eye of the world. May you be free to be yourself and free to enjoy all that God gives you. May you be free to allow your children the freedom to discover their call in life. We bless the work of your hands. May you find God in the mundane. May your home be blessed with peace and love. May they be places of light and joy. We bless you as a reflection of God, to reflect to others the meaning of love, of truth and hope, of faith and trust, in grace, of generosity and humility. All of us, each and every single one of us, have within us the qualities of the divine feminine as well as the divine masculine. It's all about the yin and the yang, right? That which receives and that which gives. So male or female, we all have all of it because the divine is neither male nor female. The divine is male and female. Make sense? That's why we care so much and so deeply when we see any of our human families suffer, be it through a natural disaster or human injustice. We all feel that pain. We all experience it. So this morning I really want to explore the divine feminine attributes um, that, we, that we really all possess. That side that is representative of fertility, of stability, of creation, of sacrifice. <clears throat> and those things are characterized by tenderness, by compassion, by persistent loyalty. So in order for us to be truly whole or truly balanced, whether we are men or women, it's important that we do embrace both that masculine and feminine aspect of ourselves of our divine nature 
not only do we want to accept and acknowledge that in ourselves, we want to accept and acknowledge that in others as well. The Divine Feminine, or the Great Mother, as it's been called, um, <clears throat> has been forever worshipped as that fertile womb and gives birth to everything, to everything. It's the great pulse of being reflected in the rhythm of all of life. There's creation everywhere at all times. And that creation continually regenerates itself. It's a cyclical process. It's a process without beginning. It's a process without end. And the Great Mother represents, resembles an immense tree whose roots lie beyond the reach of our consciousness. We don't always understand what's coming, what's in front of us, right? What's being created. It's beyond our, our consciousness. And the branches of those trees are the, all the forms of life on this planet. And the flowering is the potential within each and every single one of us. There are some really beautiful examples in the divine feminine um, through the different traditions. The Taoists explain the origin of all that is um, as feminine, and it's manifested as both male and female. It's the feminine energy that the Tao Te Ching attributes to the creation of the cosmos. Well, of course, right? Creation, feminine energy. And this is what the book says. Conceived of as having no name, it is the originator of heaven and earth. It is the mother of all things. In the Kabbalah tradition, <coughs> the indwelling aspect of God is considered also to be feminine. The Kabbalists know the soul as she. My soul aches to receive your love. Only by the tenderness of your light can she be healed. The Judaic scriptures uh, and the Gnostic Christian doctrines include wisdom as the feminine aspect, and they call it Sophia. It's considered the personification of wisdom. In, in uh, Buddhism, one of the texts states it this way, the perfection of wisdom gives light. I pay homage to the perfection of wisdom. She is worthy of homage. She is unstained, and the world cannot stain her. That's just love, right? We can't get rid of love. We can't get rid of creation. It will always be. And then, of course, there is grace. And in Christian theology, that is the expression of God's love. All those names, ideas, are associated with women. And I would say, generally speaking, grace probably evokes the most um, intense connection to the divine for many of us, because that's something that we've all pretty much grown up with. And the practice here of inclusive spirituality is what we are here at Common Ground. <coughs> um, we refer to the divine as God, as goddess as love, as life, as spirit, as source, as whatever you want to call that, that beautiful loving energy. The important idea is not so much what we call it. The important idea is that we acknowledge we are divine. That's the bottom line, that we are complex beings, both feminine and masculine in nature. That's how we begin to access that true balance in our lives by realizing that the energy of the divine masculine and the divine feminine exist equally within each of us. And it's in acknowledging that these qualities exist that we begin to find that balance in our relationship, in our relationship to ourselves, in our relationships to one another, and our relationship to the world that we live in. 
So unconditional love, compassion, beauty, those are things are deeply embedded in us. It's part of being human. It's what we came in here with, what we were born with. It's that part of us that focuses on caring for our planet um, or our attention to the beauty, the harmony, the justice, and the unity of all of life. If maybe you've noticed over um, the past several years, a shift has taken place <clears throat> where the importance of honoring these divine feminine qualities is returning to the collective awareness. And as a human family, we're reconnecting to that instinctual trust because we were beginning to nurture, understand the unity of opposites. And when we allow it to, the divine feminine has the power to heal, to comfort, and to console. And the key there is when we allow it to, if we open ourselves up to it. She has the power, the power to destroy the old and to allow love to transform the imbalances that we see and experience, that we see and experience within and that we see and experience without. She is alive, alive within the heart and the soul of every single human being on this planet. As we learn to demonstrate these qualities in our lives on a daily basis, we raise our own vibration. As we raise our vibration, the vibration of the planet raises. And we start really understanding and, and acknowledging that we truly are all one, that we truly are all connected by this beautiful energy. And as we move into understanding and we move into compassion, we learn forgiveness. And where does forgiveness take us? Well, it moves us forward in our lives. It opens our hearts. And as human beings, we are a heart-centered uh, being. The true nature of our hearts is infinite love vast, alive, free of worries, free of fear, free of doubt. And it's only through our own struggles and our own losses, as well as those struggles and losses of this planet, that humanity will get back in touch with compassion. Without the dark, you don't understand light. Same concept, right? We must struggle to understand. That's critical. It's critical because we need the essence, the, the essence of those feminine qualities present in our daily lives so we can return to balance, help balance out our world. We can balance out our bodies, our personal lives, our relationships. We have the information, the knowledge, and the understanding right at our fingertips. It's, all, it's always up to us to use that information, to share that information. And when we do, we expand our conscious awareness. We expand our understanding. We can find ways to resolve old issues and to enter into that peaceful coexistence with one another and with our planet. We absolutely can do that. And we can do it on a personal level we can do it on a local level, and we can do it on a global level. All with that divine feminine energy, right? That creation, that love, that understanding, that compassion. That's how we change and shift things. When we open ourselves up like this, we allow our love to manifest in all its possibilities. We walk in openness, we'll walk in acceptance, move away from all that judgment, no matter what circumstances appear to be. And I'm gonna repeat that. 
no matter what circumstances appear to be. Remember, this is all out there. That doesn't have to be what's in here. And what we will ultimately find through that process is that there is always within us a deep desire to love, to connect, to be with one another, and to live in that peace and that harmony. Throughout, throughout human society, <clears throat> the divine feminine has been uh, identified with the qualities of wisdom, justice, beauty, and compassion. She's also that irresistible power that destroys those old forms, that creates new ones into being. And the divine feminine is that unseen energy of the, of the soul that which, which we are connected with through our instincts, through our feelings, and through the imagination of our heart. So I invite you to welcome those feminine aspects um, of God into your daily life. Be consciously aware of those beautiful gifts that you have. Feel her presence within you. Allow that divine feminine to reemerge in consciousness so the compassion and the wisdom will begin to envelop you and you'll just glow and you'll share it with everybody else and we'll raise that vibration together. Allow her to turn the winter of your existence into a creative and life-sustaining spring. May the reality of this presence within you continue to bless you, sustain you, and create new life through you. Thank you so much for being here while I shared this truth as I understand it.